Hey everyone, Gamer J Lee here and welcome back to another video and today we are doing something that I've wanted to talk about for quite some time. Now, originally I was planning on doing this when the Humans album came out, but other things got in the way and I really just wasn't motivated at the time, but it's 2018, it's a new year, time for some new content and you know something a little bit different, something that we've never really talked about, music. And this is about my favorite band of all time, Gorillaz. Now, I've got a little something I'm going to show you guys, but this is a little thing I threw together just for this video, a little montage of some of the greatest moments from both, you know, the beginning with Phase 1, the original Gorillaz album, all the way up to Plastic Beach, and um, you're going to probably figure out why I only went up to Plastic Beach. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was something that I, you know, threw together. I've been working on the editing a little bit. And I've scrapped that thing multiple times. Like literally, I was like, okay, it's good, it's good. Uh, no, no, it's not what I wanted. Oh, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. No, no, just not right. So I've deleted that thing about five times working on that from just my laptop while I'm at work, just putting it together every so often. But what I want to talk today about is gorillas and why they mean so much to me and why they are my favorite band of all time up until now. And they still are my favorite, but honestly, I gotta give them some criticism about humans, but we'll get into that. So starting off this whole story, it's gonna get a little dark. And you know, I'm normally, I don't talk about depressing stuff, but it's gonna get a little dark. So, you know, if you don't wanna hear about this crap, hey, you know, go ahead, skip forward, or, you know, I'll probably leave a timestamp down below to get past the crappy, sad part, but it's going to get a little dark. So, first off, I discovered Gorillaz back when I was young. Like, I've heard the song Clint Eastwood and Dare and Feel Good Inc. on the radio, but I didn't really know who made it. He's like, I just heard it on the radio, and every so often you would click on MTV in the morning back when MTV was actually a music video channel, you know, on TV, and you would see the morning, you know, block, like it would show uh, music videos from Eminem and Gorillaz and, uh, you know, people at the time, 50 Cent, so on and so forth, and you would literally watch these videos and they would have little facts about it, and I, I always saw the characters, I was like, that's some weird fucking acid trip that, you know, someone was on. Like, they would play Feel Good Inc. I was like, what the fuck was going on in their minds when they made this shit? But, as years went on, I got older, and I got into high school. Now, high school is not easy. I'm going to promise you that right now. But it gets harder whenever you get to real life with a job and bills and everything else. But high school isn't easy because there's a lot of things to weigh and balance. And I wish that... If I went into high school with the mindset I have now, things would be so much different. But unfortunately, that's part of growing up. You make mistakes and you gotta live with them. In high school, I became very depressed. It was a number of things. Uh, you know, I was on the football team. I wasn't the most popular guy. I was picked on and you know, I back then I couldn't take jokes that well because I hadn't really developed that social, you know, skin whenever it comes to when your buddy's just fucking with you and I felt like they meant it at times. And you know, I wasn't the best player. I felt like I was letting down my team, so on and so forth. That weighed on me. Classes weighed on me. My the way my teacher teachers acted, you know, and some of them were dicks. That weighed on me. And real life shit weighed on me to the point that I became depressed. 
And when you have depression, it could hit you in a number of ways. You could, you know, just hide it and, you know, show you're happy on the outside. You could, you know, change who you are. You look different. That's where I went. I dyed my hair black. I started listening to bands like Three Days Grace and Rob Zombie and, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, Papa Roach, you know, cut my life into pieces. This is my, you, you get the whole fucking deal. But, you know, I was full blown depressed and I really didn't give a fuck about anything for a time. I really didn't. I didn't give a shit about a thing. And then one day I bought this CD. It had a number of different songs on it. And I bought it for one song. But then I was just scrolling through my Zune. Yeah, you know what a Zune is, right? A Zune. Well, if you don't know, it's this thing right here. It was made by Microsoft. And it was supposed to compete with the Apple you know, iPod. It didn't. It flopped. But I fucking love this thing. Like, seriously, this thing was awesome. Even had a Halo 3 version. It was honestly pretty cool. And I really did love it. I loved its UI, you know, for its menus and everything. Its organization better than, you know, uh, iTunes at the time. Like, I originally was going to get an iPod, but it just wasn't appealing to me. The way the UI was and everything. It, it was just a clusterfuck. So, I go... And I have a Zune, and I, you know, and, you know, burn all my discs onto it, and so on and so forth. And on this CD was the song Feel Good Inc. And I was just scrolling through my Zune, and I saw it come on. So I, I'm just like, fuck it. You know, I lock my Zune, and I just start listening to it. And I actually started feeling a little bit better. You know, I, I started feeling a little bit better. And it just felt like the, the music was speaking to me. You know, like music has a very special purpose in life. It can make you feel emotions. It can, you know, get you hyped up. It can get you excited. It can calm you down. It can do a number of different things. And Gorillaz had an effect on me of making me feel happy. You know, its music was very, you know, upbeat and, you know, just driven in a, in a, very you know chipper mood sort of way even though some of the songs were very depressing and very you know driven towards you know darker themes and the characters like you know 2d murdoch noodle russell all had you know like for god's sake one of them was a satanist who would always go hail satan you know he was the crazy Satanist. He was the, you know, crazy base, you know, Satanist. And then you have lovely 2D, who's the innocent, you know, guy who just got dragged into this by Murdoch. Noodle, who got shipped in a crate from Japan. And Russell, who was haunted by his best friend's death and was one of the best drummers. And they just brought him along. Like, honestly, no one remembers Russell that much. He barely gets used in music videos. But overall, I feel like Russell deserves more love. But overall, it got me in a better mood. So I started looking more into grills. I looked into, you know, the music videos. You know, you had the uh, G-Bytes or whatever it was called. I forget. I think they were called G-Bytes where it was these little shorts that they would put up where, you know, you would have funny moments, you know, having the characters have a little lore. And this was during phase one. And then you get into phase two where, you know, you have songs like Feel Good Inc., El Miliana. Uh, You had Dare, which is my girlfriend, my current girlfriend's favorite song. And so on and so forth. And the music was upbeat. And right around the time that I got into Gorillaz, Phase 3 was starting. Which was Plastic Beach. And honestly, I bought it day one. And it was, in my opinion, probably my... I would have to say, probably my favorite album out of the original three. Because it would probably go like this. It would go, favorite... Plastic Beach, second favorite, Gorillaz, third favorite, Demon Days. I know that people are going to say, oh my god, you you think Demon Days is your third favorite out of the original three? Yeah, because there were some songs that were hit or miss. Like, there's some good ones, like El Miliana, you have Feel Good Inc., Dare, uh, Kids, with Gu- Kids With Guns was eh, Dirty Harry, you know, had some good moments, and the music video was good, but it was... And nonetheless, and then there were songs like White Lie, White Lie. It's like, uh, no. And 
Plastic Beach was honestly a really good album. I really liked it. I loved the story. The story was absolutely amazing. They had a really good beginning, you know, to end, and they had little shorts that they put it online, just like they did with the G-Bytes, you know, showing Murdoch kidnapping 2D, um, you know, Russell trying to come after them and because they didn't bring him along for the album, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, the car chase scene from Stylo, which you saw in that clip, you saw two, uh, Noodle, who they thought they had died in the El Meliana music video. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I've always pronounced it wrong. But she's coming to the island, the cyborg noodle, so on and so forth. It had a really good story to it. And honestly, I was hooked. I was I was hooked, you know? And so I go to my first ever concert, the first ever one I ever went to, Gorilla's Plastic Beach Tour. Best experience of my life. It was honestly one of the best things I've ever gotten to share with my dad. And it was a great concert. You know, they played all the greats. They played Feel Good Inc. They played everything. Well, then after Plastic Beach, you know, everything was dying down. And I started joining some groups on Facebook. And I met my first real, you know, not like, oh, we're, you know, cute high school bullshit. Real girlfriend. We got together and we were together for about three years. And what got us together was our love of gorillas. This isn't a gorillas t-shirt. This is a cow chop t-shirt. I'm just wearing this because demonetized days. It's a joke, but it's a good joke. Honestly, I love this shirt, even though I'm not a big fan of cow chop. But we were together because of our love of gorillas. And that brought us together. And then we found out, hey, we both like anime. Hey, we like video games, so on and so forth. Things did not last, as you guys probably can tell, because I'm with someone different who I got with recently. And, you know, it, it was, you know, a great experience for me, you know, meeting someone who I could share this with, who, you know, I also really cared about. But after Plastic Beach, they came out with The Fall, which was just some side tracks, just like the G sides and D sides do. They weren't as good as those ones, but they were eh, decent, just like those other ones are. And then they come out with the collection and do your thing music video and then they disappear and we don't hear anything we heard about you know some things about damon and jamie you know separating because he doesn't want to do gorillas anymore he's you know focusing on other stuff he's got married and so on and so forth and you know we didn't really hear much we didn't know if gorillas was going to continue and then back in 2016 we started hearing rumors oh gorillas is coming back next year oh it's it's happening it's happening and then this year, we got Humans. We finally got Humans. You know, it was an album that everyone was waiting for. And the buildup was weird. Because the first thing we heard about, and it was a music video uh, for, um, I forget what the song was. It was the one that's about Trump. And whenever I saw this, I was like, okay, the, tone, the, the beat is Gorillaz. I see 2D, but I don't see any animations. And why is it political? Like, why are why are we doing political? Now, I know that sometimes Gorilla songs have had a political feel, you know, theme. But this was straight out political, you know, because of what was going on. Maybe I didn't realize those political themes whenever I was growing up, so on and so forth. But this was just, you know, basing it off what was going on at the times, you know, because people hate Trump, so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. I don't like political shit in my music. I want something that's going to get me away from the real world. It's my escape. It's my escape from the bullshit of real life. That was like, okay, you know, this, I originally thought it wasn't going to be an al in the album. I thought it was just a song that they were collabing for this other dude. And then we get Satan's bars and I'm excited because this is the true animation. We're seeing 2D, Russell, Murdoch, uh, you know, Noodle. We're seeing them all and it's, you know, the animations that we all grew up with, but they don't look nearly as good as they did from Gorilla's Demon Days and Plastic Beach. They don't look nearly as good. Okay. Then the song starts playing, and I'm not liking it. 
I'm not liking it at all. I'm finding it annoying. And then you get you finally get a little bit of 2D near the end. And you know, you finally get some of you know the 2D vocals and you see Murdoch and he's on an acid trip and it was a crazy music video and the animations were cool. But it wasn't feeling like gorillas. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and they're like, just wait until the album comes out. I'm sure there'll be some good music videos that come out of it. You know, it'll be good, right? Album comes out. And the first song on the album after this little short vignette sort of track is Ascension. The most annoying song I've ever fucking heard. And honestly, I couldn't stand that song. I could barely stand half the songs or even three quarters of the songs on the album. There was some good ones like Let Me Out. And, uh, you know, I think it was it was a, not, a, not Ascension. No, that was the bad one. I forget what the other one was. But there was two really good ones that were not, you know, 2D vocals that I did like. But there was a very minimal amount of the actual characters, like the actual vocals of 2D. There was not any storytelling. It was mostly a collab with all these other artists and then slapping the name Gorillaz on the album so that they could get famous. Because the guy who did Ascension, let me just tell you a little story, but we're going to jump a little bit ahead. Me and my friend, who's now my current girlfriend, went to go see Gorillaz live for the human store because I bought these tickets before the album came out, right? I believe it was before the album came out. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And the warm up was the guy who did Ascension. I'm sitting there with my girlfriend for an hour listening to this. The most annoying rapper I've ever heard. And it wasn't good. I'm sitting there. I'm just like, please go away. Please go away. Let, let Damon just come out and hit you with a guitar. Please go away. Finally, the show starts and, you know, I have this kid, you know, next to me. He, he, he was a nice kid. Like his, it was his first concert. I knew that same feeling. I was excited for him. I was getting him pumped up. I'm like, are you ready for gorillas? He's like, yeah, you know, it, it was awesome. You know, I got to see a kid be excited to be a kid, to see some, you know, something he really cared about. And the concert was great. You guys saw the vlog. We talked about it. It was great. They played a lot of the songs that fans loved, so on and so forth. It was a really great experience. And I did start enjoying some of the human songs a little bit better. And then I come home. But that that was in the future. But let's go back to the album. More music videos come out. You know, you had the 2D Sleeping Powder, which I was like, what the fuck is this shit? The, okay, we got the vocals. But literally, it looks like someone took, um, what is that, that face cam uh, VR thing that some people use for, you know, back in 2011, 2012. Face rig. Face rig. That's what it was called. And that was how they did the 2D animation. It was, it was terrible. And I was like, this music video is shit. What the fuck? And then we get strobe light, which uses some of that similar animation, better animation, but still the 3D, you know, stuff. And it, I, I like Strobe Light. It's, it's okay. It wasn't great. And I started liking it a little bit more after the music video. But it didn't feel like a gro gorilla storyline. There was no story like you had with, you know, the original three albums. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people felt was lacking was the storytelling. Like, the storytelling in Plastic Beach was absolutely amazing. But in this album... There's just a lot missing, you know, a lot wanted, and there's not enough of the actual character storytelling. There's not enough 2D, there's not enough Murdoch, not enough Noodle, Russell, whoever you want it to be. There just wasn't enough. And it was all these other artists coming in and doing these songs, and then there would be a small amount of, you know, vocals from, you know, Jamie. Or no, not Jamie, Damon. I always get those two names mixed up for who it's supposed to be. But... It was a letdown. And then, you know, I see people going online and just defending it. White Knight defending humans. Oh, it's a good album. You're just you're just not used to modern day taste. Yeah, it's a modern day feel music. And the one thing about Gorillaz is they've never done sticking with modern day trends. They've never stuck with, you know, what was popular at the time. And unfortunately, 
this album sounded like shit to me because it sounded like every modern day song. And I just turned it off, went back to listening to Plastic Beach, Demon Days, and Gorillaz, the original albums. And yes, every so often I listen to some of the music from the new ones because my girlfriend likes the, the song Strobe Light, you know, so on and so forth. But it just wasn't my cup of tea. But it drove me nuts seeing all these people. Like, I talked to people at the concert and they said, yeah, I hated humans. It was shit. Yeah, I didn't like humans. I it just didn't feel like gorillas. And then I, you know, go online and literally every video is defending the shit out of it. Like, I've, you know... I was just like, what? Why? Like, it, give me a reason. And half the reasons I saw were just total bullshit. It was just basically them saying, oh, it's just new. It's new. You got to get used to it. This is how it's going to be. No, I know. I, I don't have to get used to it. I don't have to continue to enjoy something. I will. I'm a fan, but I'm not a fanboy. I'm able to give criticism. And I knew my criticism from the very beginning that I didn't really like humans. And I'm not going to change my opinion because I'm a fan of gorillas. You know, you can't let fanboyism blind you from what you truly feel in your heart. And if you don't truly like something, don't force yourself to like something. It's like what I say with Halo 5. You may love Halo, but if Halo 5 isn't fun for you, don't force yourself to love it. You know what I mean? But I just wanted to give, you know, my own opinion. I love gorillas. I still do. Every weekend, I'm, you know, me and my girlfriend are sitting here. We're playing with the Amazon tab. I can't say the real name of it, you know, because if not, she'll wake up. But basically, we're listening to music from gorillas and so on and so forth. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. I would be dead. Really honest. If it wasn't for their music saving my life, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have Gamer J Lee whatsoever. He wouldn't have ever existed. And it means a lot to me that I, that their music moved me so much that I was able to stop myself from doing something I would regret. That I wouldn't have those life experiences of, you know, meeting my first true love and, you know, being able to go on trips to, you know, Seattle and seeing them live or going down to Texas and so many experiences in my head I can think of, of life that, you know, would have been missed. And I have to thank gorillas for that. Am I going to be brutally honest about, you know, when they come out with music and if I don't like it? Yeah, I think everyone should. I think you should always be critical if you like something or not, or, you know, be subjective or objective. Just be honest with yourself. Don't let being a fan blind you of what you truly feel. That's just me though. But guys, thank you for watching. This is a very special video to me and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. If you didn't, hey, go ahead and leave a dislike. And if you guys have a different opinion than me, let me know down in the comment section down below. How did you feel about humans? Why did you like humans? Let me know down in the comment section, you know, maybe you can let me know what you liked about it. And maybe I can re-listen to the song or re-listen to the album and say, you know what? Maybe that's a little bit better than I thought it was now that I have a little bit better understanding, but let me know down in the comment section. I would really appreciate it. But guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for giving this video a chance. And as always, Gamer J Lee signing out.